star transformations are, I had decided, and I really did want when talking about when we were planning this little webinar, we really wanted to make sure that we didn't cover any topics that you have to pay for. I mean, you can pay us, but nothing that's had the licensing implications. And the classic style transformation is Enterprise Edition. But one thing I do want to show, particularly, is not only what a style transformation is in terms of equivalent sequels, but also how you can achieve a style transformation with Standard Edition. With Standard Edition. That's what I really want to come down to, and it's all down to the way you write your sequel. So, what's the concept of a style transformation? You, re you rewrite joins as subqueries. So, trivial example, if I were to select ename from emp, and again, natural join dept, where dname equals sales. So, I want to pull out all the employees in the sales department. And what happens? We get six employees back. I can rewrite that as an equivalent SQL, which would be select a name from emp, <coughs> where depths no equals select depths no from depths, where d name equals sales. And that's an exactly equivalent SQL. We get the same rows back. And I can assure you, I won't even bother to prove it. I will, that the, I will go to the cross-based optimizer at this stage, uh, that the optimizer will write those as exactly the same execution plan. Uh, do your own checks if you want, but it's not going to get that rows. It's not going to get that one wrong. Now, a true style transformation takes that a lot further, because what I've done in effect here is I've got one facts table, a single facts table, emp, and a single dimen dimension table, which is depth. Well, not many data warehouses have a fact table of one dimension. They have many dimensions. So what I've done to work up an example here is I've created a little star schema. What I have is a fact table and two dimension tables. I've created a little table. I've done this in advance to save time. I've done a little table called products, and every product has a code, which is a primary key. I've created a table called buyers, and every buyer has a code and is in a particular country. So those are my two dimensions, the product's dimension, the buyer's dimension. And then I've got a fact table, sales, which says that every sale was for a certain value of a certain product to a certain buyer. So that's my star schema, a fact table and two dimension tables. Now, <coughs> I've already analyzed the, analyzed the tables, by the way, to build some statistics. Optimized statistics are, of course, critical. So star transformation requires bitmap indexes, which is why it needs enterprise edition. So if I run the query, I just create my bitmap indexes. So create bitmap index PI on sales port code. We get my bitmap index there. Um, this, of course, is where we're straight into enterprise edition, because the moment you create a bitmap index, you need the enterprise edition license. This is taking a while, by the way, because there are a million rows in my sales table. I did want to get some sort of sensible figures out of it. I'll create another bitmap index on my buyers, which I shall call BI. So I've got my bitmap indexes. If I run my query, a little star, a star query, first without a star transformation, we'll set auto trace. No, I won't set auto trace on. I'll do it with the. So I've still got statistics level high, so we'll show. Parameter. Yes, I've still got all set there. So we, um, there's, as, as Dave said, there's a hint you can put in instead. But, um, but I'll just leave that set at the session level, which will make life a bit easier. Now, the query I need to run will be a star query that joins the two dimensions across the facts table. So, for example, I could run select, sum up my measure, which is the column called value, the value from sales, sum value from sales, and then 
drawing it to one dimension, natural join to products, and then natural join to buyers. So I'm going across the say at the fact table to both dimensions. And then we put in the product, the predicate. Say where product equals books and country equals Germany. So how many sales have we had of books to Germany? And it's taking a fair few seconds to come up with the answer. And back comes the answer. But that took a while. Well, how did Oracle actually run that? Then look at the detail of the execution plan. And here we see what it did. So navigating down, it is a full scan of products, applying the filter to get books. That gave you the product code of books. Then it did a full scan of buyers, applying the filter, which was buyers in Germany. And it's joined them with the Cartesian product, and that's fine, because I analyzed the data, Oracle knows there's only one row in each. Cartesian product, and then the bad news. It's done a hash join to sales. And what that means is we've had to do, <coughs> well, a million rows, as you can see. We've had to do a million lookups to retrieve the matching rows. And that's the way Oracle would do it without a star transformation. Now we enable star transformations. So also, I hope, by the way, I hope you all appreciate how brave I am to do this sort of thing. You know, with these little demonstration systems, the tiniest environmental factor could cause the optimizer to come up with a totally different plan. But anyway, auto session set, star. Fred, even if no one else is. Good. <laughs> now, everyone can laugh at me if this sort of thing doesn't work. So we set star transformation enabled equals true. This parameter defaults to false. I've never quite understood why, and I can't think why you ever would want it on false if you bought your enterprise additional licenses. But set it to true, and then run my query again. <coughs> Maybe that was quicker. But let's see what the execution plan was. Ah, star transformation used. Phew, it works. Right, a totally different approach. And what it's done, if you navigate down here, in effect, it's done the rewrite I described earlier. It's rewritten it to a set of subqueries. What we're doing is bitmap index range scan of my bitmap index on the products. So first, it's done. It's gone to products first applying the filter, books, to identify the product code. Then it scanned the bitmap index to get the row IDs of all the sales for books. And that's in effect is saying select from sales where product ID in, select from products where product equals books. Then it does the same thing with the buyers. So it scans the buyers table to find the code for Germany and then it picks them up the bitmap index to get the relevant rows. So at this point, it's got two lists of interesting rows. Rows that were for sales of books, rows that were for sales of, to Germany. And it merges those two bitmaps with an AND. So in effect, it's getting the intersection of the two sets. Then converts the bitmaps to row IDs and constructs the final result set. So a totally different write. And the optimizer did that automatically. No need to rewrite the SQL. But you can only do that if you've got Enterprise Edition licenses. So, what if you don't have Enterprise Edition licenses? Well, and and John, before, mm -hmm. before you start that, uh, just, just to recap this, um, we need Enterprise Edition, but I think you also said that that parameter, start tr transformation enabled, is set to default by default? It defaults to false, yes. A strange default, but that's yeah. the way it is. Okay, well now what I'll do is in effect, revert to standard edition. So I've got to get rid of my indexes. So drop index, oops, wrong window, drop my index on buyers, drop my index on products, because they are now illegal. And now see if I can get the results with an equivalent SQL. Um, I will look at timings at some point, by the way. Um, we might as well check the timings. Um, notes, since we're here, my star transformation, the time 
was for that the actual time was 2 seconds, 2.79 seconds, whereas my previous, without the star transformation, it was 9 seconds. So star transformation has improved things quite substantially, 9 seconds down to 2 seconds. Now I'll try a manual rewrite in equivalent sequels. I can no longer use star transformations anymore. I don't even have the indexes to do it. So I'll select some value from sales where prod ID equals select prod code from products where product equals books. That's the first dimension. And by code equals Select cross my fingers and see what result we get. We get a missing right parenthesis, but we also get a spelling mistake. Right. Missing the C in the select statement. Sub -select. Thank you. Oh, it was in the first one, wasn't it? That's probably the first of many mistakes. It's not prod ID, it's prod code. Right. It's prod code and select. And that one looks okay. Right. That seemed reasonably quick, didn't it? So I've got the same results. That really is an equivalent SQL. How was it actually executed and how long did it take? We went from 9 seconds to 2 seconds with the Enterprise Edition feature. With my rewrite, good heavens, it was even quicker, barely half a second. So I've actually outperformed the optimizer. And you can see what it's done, is rewritten the statements completely. You know, my Equivalent SQL has come up with, well, my equivalent SQL, I did the rewrite, has come up with a totally different execution plan. And what we're doing now is, you know, we're doing a scan of products to retrieve the interesting code. Then we're doing a scan of buyers to again get to the interesting code. And from then, we can go to store to sales and apply the appropriate filter which you see here. And note, by the way, ha, ah, yes, earlier question. Note all three of these operations were offloaded to Exadata, if we have that hardware in place. But best of all, even the filters were all offloaded to Exadata. This entire query in Exadata environment would be executed on the storage tier. That's an unexpected side effect. I wasn't expecting something quite so dramatic. But that's a very nice example, I think, of how the equivalent SQL has outperformed astronomically even Enterprise Edition star transformations because that was done with standard edition features, all done by the way I wrote the code. I see that, John. Could, could you do us a favor and uh, show us the equivalent SQL side by side there? Uh, it scrolled off, the, the first one you did scrolled off the top, I think. Yes. Um, let me go to, I should have got it in the buffer somewhere. Um, Right, so that was me rewriting it as a star transformation. I'm going to have to scroll up. My original SQL was there. Select some value from sales, join products, join buyers, where product equals. This is intuitive, isn't it? You know, many people would think this is much easier to understand. You know, but the results are rubbish. Right. compared to my equivalent SQL. Yeah, so uh, more and more we see customers saving uh, tens of thousands of dollars by going to standard edition. And um, uh, this, is, this is a great technique in, in the event you don't have an enterprise edition. So uh, John, maybe, maybe you better answer this one. Um, why don't you use Toad or PL SQL? <laughs> Um, I happen to think I, that Toad should be stamped on. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you my opinion, because I don't like it. 
But I'll, I'll, tell, I'll let, turn it over to you now, John. No, there's nothing wrong with Toad at all. Absolutely nothing. Um, I don't use it, uh, firstly, because you have to pay for it, and Dave is chronically mean when it comes to paying for tools will make my life easier. Uh, but much more importantly, um, because we work at many, many sites, you have to work all the time with the lowest common denominator, and that's SQL Plus. Now, that's really the reason why I use SQL Plus all the time and why I can't use Toad. Now, I can't go onto a customer site and say, hey, I can't do this unless you buy a Toad license. But it's a good product. Yeah. And if you've got the license, use it.